and um, but I'm just gonna touch on a couple things and then uh, share something else with you. But um, uh, one of the things that God told me was during my quiet time, I've always looked out on the world and I've seen these radical Christians, people um, that go into China, that go into these countries where you get killed for sharing your faith. And I've always thought it so cool and so just so awesome that they have that faith and they have that willingness to do that. But um, I felt like God just told me in my quiet time that there's no such thing as a radical Christian, only an obedient one. If God tells you to go to China and you go to China, that makes you a radical Christian. But if God tells you to go into your schools and tell everyone you can about God, that also makes you a radical Christian. And I just thought that was something really cool that God taught me. Um, another thing was um, there was a really cool poet, um, David Bowden, that um, he had come to Super Summer. And um, he's just a crazy awesome poet. But um, uh, since he was there, he showed one. He shared one of his poems, and um, at the rally, um, I, they had a contest where all the schools were able to send up um, a poet, and so I got to go up for our school, and so that was really cool, but I'm just going to share the poem that I shared at Super Summer. Darkness, a lack of light. Its definition is simple, not so hard to comprehend, but those who live in it continue to pretend as if this is the way it's supposed to be, like they belong to its treachery. But its immortality has nothing to do with you and me, but everything to do with what we cannot see. Let me be honest and say it has not always been this way. Darkness was not always here. There was once no such thing as a tear. It was once beautiful from the birds, the air, to the way life went on without a care. But then darkness crept in, all because one chose to sin. Death fed, darkness spread until it became the world we now know. But as the world became sicker, there was a flicker. Hope in the distance, a strong resistance, a beautiful, elegant light willing to fight. The power that was in it showed that only one could have sent it. As the light grew near, the darkness began to tremble with fear. Then came the drums of war, the tension was tore, as over the hill the light began to pour. Lightning struck, the darkness was stuck. The darkness tried to flee, but it quickly found out there was nowhere the light couldn't see. Then the light reached out and pulled it out of us, because the darkness dw truly dwells inside of all of us. So now, don't you see, the true enemy is the inner me. It's that voice inside of me saying my continuous praying, only it's the roof and on the ground it is laying. But the light cries out and continues to shout that God loves me, all of me, despite my most treacherous treachery. The darkness says I should run from the light, give in to my fright, and flee into the night. But I have learned to love this beautiful thing, so I will choose to sing praise be to the King. Now the darkness cries out as it dies out. The dead corpse lies out, dries out, baking in the sun, proof that the light has truly won. So, that's it. Yeah. Amen. But I just had an awesome opportunity to be able to go up and share that, and I'm really thankful to God just for all the opportunities I've had, not only just to share, but also to listen to other people share. Um, like their testimonies and other things. So it was just an amazing time, and I'm super stoked to go back next year, and um, I'm really hoping I can apply what I've learned because it's it's not useful if I go and I learn something, but I never apply it. So I'm really hoping that I can take what I've learned and apply it to my life from here on out. So.